Hi there, my name's uh, Rishi Narg. Um, I've uh, come from uh, the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. Uh, that's GA for GH. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, developing open standards for responsible data sharing. Uh, I think before I kick into the main bit of the talk, I should point out that I haven't actually been the one sending the questions on Slido, hashtag GA for GH. <clears throat> so uh, there were two things in the abstract I suggested. One was uh, talking about our model for developing the standards and then some of the standards themselves. Uh, so the standards themselves will probably feature more on the poster that I'll be doing at PO5 uh, this evening. Uh, but uh, to start off with how we do things, we're first going to look at why we're doing things the way we are. So uh, one of the big changes happening in how the world gets its genomic data is it's coming from healthcare systems more and more, so not from uh, sort of open, public, uh, publicly available data sets. Uh, there are a number of national initiatives and uh, disease-based uh, research centers collecting data um, around uh, different use cases. So this, and this will kind of number, you know, be a significant volume. We're talking sort of perhaps uh, 60 million genomes or so uh, of healthy individuals and then more for uh, rare disease and cancer use cases as well. So this brings uh, challenges with it. So, uh, for instance, the data has uh, national boundaries, so they'll be in silos, uh, they'll be based in institutions. Um, we need to develop uh, analyses that scale. We uh, then have to make sure these, how do we work with regulation and then uh, patient consent and data sharing limits that are imposed on these data sets. And, you know, 60 million geliums, patient genomes is quite a lot. You, you're not going to be downloading this to your, your laptop and uh, your, your server farm and running them. You're going to have to do this federated approach. And I think we're all, uh, it's been outlined a number of times, there are lots of improvements for uh, the benefits from data sharing, um, including, uh, including uh, getting more significant results from the analyses. But we also want to translate these results back into the healthcare sector. So how, if we have one rare disease, by having this large data set to search through, we could find another rare disease patient and uh, try and use those uh, patient uh, commonalities to help uh, look, look after the patients. And uh, in the end, you know, at the end of this process, we want to build more uh, systems that can help clinicians make more informed decisions and help with diagnoses. And we want to do that by developing standards so that uh, all these databases are going to interact. So we're envisaging a place, a future where, and it's currently happening, where data depositors or clinicians, so put their data, uh, patient data, into uh, an individual silo data set. So these are based around, you know, I've used national um, you know, ones here. The researchers then, they don't do this, uh, they can't download this data set, but they're using the paradigm of sending their data off to the cloud to run next to where it is. So um, we're looking at this uh, thing that's been mentioned of, uh, and moving analyses to the data, we want this to be reciprocal so data sets can be shared, and we want to transfer these results um, into the healthcare sector and use the healthcare data to start off with. So what we have done is assemble a, a collection of uh, driver projects. These are people holding large volumes of data. They include national initiatives and uh, H3 Africa and Genomics England and so forth, some uh, more open public data sets, including the ENA EVA and then uh, you know, EGA, which has restrictions around it, and then disease areas, such as the autism sharing initiative and cancer-based uh, places. What we then say is, why don't you get together, identify the areas in which you want you, the problems you need to solve that are common to all of you. So we say discovery is to do with findability and search. So we d build a search uh, capability. So for instance, Beacon helps people access uh, data or find out if data of interest is in a data set where they can't see the data itself. So we get groups that are of common interest to work together to build these, uh, uh, to co collaborate in these what we call these work screens, the discovery and cloud and so forth. And these form our real-world uh, driver projects, real-world use cases, and uh, in the, but when it comes to the meetings, we have collaborations in uh, people from outside these driver projects participate, so from academic institutions and, and driver projects not listed here. And uh, here's a sort of, sort of brief roadmap of our, of our uh, projects and our um, roadmap. Some items we're looking at, we look after a CRAM, and so to improvements in CRAM include a cryptographic uh, wrapper around it. Uh, VCF and BCF, we're looking at improving the 
Uh, how does it scale with the next version? That's a big uh, problem that people are facing. And with HDS get, uh, that allows a um, <coughs> that allows a way of getting subsets of you, you know you don't want to download huge cram files if you just want to deal with chromosome one, for instance, across a range of cram files. So uh, that's the range there. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>